My name is Ogo Okwer. I'm a filmmaker and I'm a multidisciplinary designer. I've always wanted to make films. I've always wanted to, basically I've always wanted to tell stories. So it's very convenient to look for platforms that easily um, help those stories to be communicated in the best form possible. Films, television, animation. Um, I'm also African, so there's a lot of uh, stories that need to be told from the continent. So I just feel those are the biggest places to tell stories and get it across the world. You know, there's always a single narrative out of Africa. But I feel if more people are able to work on those platforms, then they should be. And I feel I've got the talent and the skills to do that. The first shot film I did was damaged. It was in my bedroom. It was well received. It had to do with abuse. A girl was fresh out of um, um, abuse with, in a relationship. So the story was centered on that. Well, I clean up your mess. What do I look like? Your mum. And I know about that s Angie. The next one I did was called Saving Kane. That also had to do with some form of illness where people don't really talk about bipolar disorder. But it had a supernatural spin on it. I'm sorry about this. I did another film for a 24 hour, 48 hour sci fi film festival called Darwin's Plan. That did well. <sighs> and obviously, I'm on my current short film, Catface. <laughs> My biggest inspiration in the film industry and animation industry, it comes from two different places. So you have the foreign, well, I call it the Western influences. You have people that I admire so much, independent filmmakers like um, Sam Raimi, you know, uh, Tyler Perry, Robert Rodriguez, Quentin Tarantino, Scorsese, uh, Alfred Hitchcock. Then in Africa, you've got the new bit of African filmmakers like uh, Colin Falayo, obi Meloyer, and obviously Tunde Kalani. Uh, these people I really admire their filmmaking abilities. Animators, there's no one greater than Walt Disney. And uh, obviously in terms of uh, comics going into film, you have people like Stan Lee of Marvel. Those are the people I really, really look up to. I really love psychological films, films that would make you think. And those could be action, that could be thriller, they could be horror. I do not like the slasher type horror films. I feel they're too easy to make and too cheesy. But I love films that would get you thinking give you a certain reaction. So if I, if I like cut face, the film I've made is slightly horror and slightly thriller, but it's something that when you watch it, you think and you get, you hopefully get like a, a certain feeling out of it, which is not just, oh, I just got scared for the sake of it. There's a story behind it. Cat face, very funny title, I know. I was looking for a name that could shock people, pretty much. I, need, I was looking for a name that when people hear it, they're like, what, what is that? The idea behind Catface, the reason why I did it was, one, we don't have enough African superheroes. That for me is key. I'm Nigerian descent and I crave African superheroes. Black Panther is pretty much the only superhero we have in terms of uh, the fiction world. But the reality is I wanted something that could start help to add to that ecosystem. So that's why I came up with the, the idea for Catface. Also, Catface touches on the, some of the dark pitfalls in online dating. There's a lot of internet serial killers that have such crazy affinity with online dating communities. And you know some of their stories need to be told. So I decided, okay, let me highlight that, but at the same time entertain people. But not only that, let me, let me bring a hero into this because this, they're victims in this. They need to be helped. Who can help them? Obviously a hero. But let me, I think, it's, I think everything came together and I decided, you know what? Let me get a superhero out of this whole story. And the name Cat came in. It, I now created a world that had to do with um, a supernatural um, kingdom where a goddess was a cat and it was, it's very, it's very, it's very spiritual but I, I want people to see the film and they can understand it. I don't want to spoil it too much for them. Why the f do I care why? I want to get out of here! So the cast for the film, there were quite, quite a wide range. You have um, Catherine Nair. She's a very talented actress, model, and she's been involved in so many commercials and uh, films. She's also a writer. Catherine Nair played uh, Ara in the film. Um, the, the, the protagonist. Then you have Anthony Trahan, who he also played one of the protagonists, a very talented, good-looking uh, actor. Uh, we have Alex Scrivens, Larry Olubamiwo, who's a former professional boxer. 
and you have uh, the gorgeous Fanny Escobar, who is a beautiful Chilean French actress. So these are the people that are the leads in the film. <laughs> The biggest challenge I faced while working on Catface, and I think on any micro-budget uh, production short film feature, is funding. It's funding because it, it all revolves around money. And what now happens is because of that, you're dealing with people's times and you have to be careful. Um, somebody may at the last minute get a job that costs so much more money. You get disappointed at the last minutes as well when it comes to venues. You could hire a venue and you'd realize, for example, when we're shooting, we didn't know that the studio had booked like the, the studio adjacent to us to a, a music video shoot. So we couldn't film for the past, for, for like four or five hours. So, because we needed sound. A couple of days before that, there was a church, to, <laughs> a floor above us. So we, again, we couldn't shoot for four hours. Um, so it's, you, you see all those kind of things as well. Trying to find the best location to film, again, you don't have enough money, so you have to compromise. But what we ended up doing was making the best out of what we had. I had a very creative, talented production designer. The cinematographer was great. Everyone was great, so we were just very creative and we were thinking on our feet every single minute. Catface, um, hopefully we are looking at making that a feature. So again, depends on the interest of people and um, financiers. But the next project we have on the slate is an animation web series called Cypher Nights. That is going into production next month and hopefully would have um, a few, one or two episodes out on the web at the end of the year. We want to start with the internet because that's the quickest way to release content, uh, especially when you're doing it independently. Then uh, also we have an independent feature film that we're looking at kicking off. Um, it has to do with uh, sex slavery within the Nigerian and the UK. That's also another one. And uh, there's a TV series that I'm hoping to develop with uh, another partner, but that's still under wraps now. So quite a few. Um, we have so many other projects lined up, but these are the first ones we're gonna start with. If you wanna watch Catface, follow me at Ogodinife. That's on Twitter, at Ogodinife. Uh, that's O-G-O-D-I-N-I-F-E and also at Instagram at Ogodinife. Catface website is www.catfacethefilm.com and all the information will be there. The Catface is going to go through the festivals, fingers crossed, we win a few awards, uh, get good mentions. Then we're going to go straight to video on demand and it will go public. I didn't kill anybody, I swear on my life. Please. I need to get back to my wife.